For the last four weeks, I've been working on this action combat roguelite for the playdate. And last week, I created this map system. This week, I'm going to create a shop and add a couple of items you can buy from the shop. But first, I wanted to address a couple comments I had about the map. It seems like it wasn't very clear that these later levels weren't accessible until you beat the level you were on. And also, what the currently selected level wasn't clear either. So, I faded out the latter levels and added a selection UI for the current level. I always read every comment and take every idea into consideration, so if you feel like you have a good idea for something, leave a comment and it might make it into the game. After that, I started work on the shop. I created an item data system and created a UI to display the item data. To be honest, this UI work is pretty boring and it's also super hot in Washington right now, so my motivation was at an all-time low. So to get stuff done, I just threw together a temporary art and some very simple temporary UI to just get the functionality down, and later I'll come back and clean it up. I highly recommend that strategy if you find yourself hitting a wall in game development. I then took this frog character from this asset pack and created an idle animation and added it to the shop as a shopkeeper. Canonically, his name is Mr. Frogman. Thank you, Mr. Frogman. I'll probably add some dialogue or something to the character later on. I got this comment about how the combat is kind of flat, which I agree with since all you do is spam roll and attack. I also got this other comment about using the crank as an ability wheel. I thought maybe if you can purchase abilities in the shop and switch between them, it would make combat more engaging since you'd be incentivized to constantly switch between abilities in order to maximize your DPS, like those crazy Breath of the Wild combos. Here I'm buying things at the shop, and you might notice that some of the items are marked as swap abilities. Those ones will be the active abilities you can use in the ability wheel, which I call the swap pop-up. Every other item will have some sort of passive effect. Here's the first pass at the swap pop-up, which shows up whenever you hold up on the D-pad. You can switch between abilities using the crank. Here it is again, but this time after you purchase three different abilities. I then started implementing some of the abilities. I decided that pressing down on the D-pad would activate the ability, since I didn't have any other inputs to use. So that meant replacing the slide attack with a swap ability item, which I called Jar of Grease. I also quickly put together a swap ability that causes the player to do like a dash attack, which looks a little silly, so I'll probably tweak the dash amount. But it was super easy to implement since it's just a basic attack, but with high player velocity. You can see that I swap between the slide attack and this dash attack by using the swap pop-up. It felt a little awkward holding up and cranking at the same time, so I made it a toggle instead. Pressing up brings up the pop-up, while pressing it again dismisses it. I got a bunch of comments saying I should make it so that attacking recharges the spin meter instead of it recharging automatically to force the player to switch between attacks. I agreed with the change, and to prevent myself from answering the same comment over and over, I just went ahead and added it to the game. You might notice that I lowered the max spin time since it was kind of too powerful. Instead, I made it so you can purchase an item, the spinning top, to increase the max spin time. Next week, I'm planning on adding cooldowns to the abilities so you can't spam them, a way to earn gold, some more items and abilities, and hopefully some other stuff. If you missed last week's episode, you can click the video on the left, and if the next devlog is out, you can click the video on the right. See you next time.